Okay, this is part 10 of Federalist number 10. Um, if you're just viewing this video accidentally, we're just reading the Federalist paper number 10. We'll be discussing it later. Actually, we'll be discussing it after the next video. So, this is the, these are the last three paragraphs in the Federalist number 10 that I guess we'll be looking at. I'll start. Hence, it clearly appears that the same advantage which a republic has over a democracy in controlling the effects of faction is enjoyed by a large over a small republic, is enjoyed by the union over the states composing it. Does this advantage consist in the substitution of representatives whose enlightened views and virtuous sentiments render them superior to local prejudices and to schemes of injustice? It will not be denied that the representation of the Union will be most likely to possess these requisite endowments. Does it consist in the greater security afforded by a greater variety of parties against the event of any one party being able to outnumber and oppress the rest? In an equal degree, does the increased variety, does the increased variety of parties comprised within the union increase the security? Does it, in fine, consist in the greater obstacles opposed to the concert and accomplishments of the secret wishes of an unjust and interested majority? Here again, the extent of the union gives it the most palpable advantage. Palpable advantage, and it's an advantage that you can actually see or feel. So, uh, Madison, he's just, uh, he's asking questions, but basically he is saying that this extended republic, any way you look at it, this large republic will give you multiple benefits. And every question that he asks here in this paragraph for him, the answer would probably be yes. So I'll go to the next paragraph. The influence of factious leaders may kindle a flame within their particular states, but will be unable to spread a general conflagration through the other states. A religious sect may degenerate into a political faction in a part of the Confederacy, but the variety of sects dispersed over the entire face of it must secure the national councils against any danger from that source. A rage for paper money, for an abolition of debts, for an equal division of property, or for any other improper or wicked projects will be less apt to pervade the whole body of the Union than a particular member of it. In the same proportion, as such a malady is more likely to taint a particular country or district than an entire state. So again, he goes through all the weaknesses that a small republic might have or pretty much looks at what the states were doing. Remember when he says, when he talks about paper money or division of property, a rage for paper money. People were going crazy asking their assemblymen, the legislature of assemblymen of their legislatures, state legislatures, to issue paper money so that they could pay their debts with paper money 
and make it easier on themselves. So he says, we are trying to take that away from the states. Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution, we will get to it, does exactly ta that. It tells the states you can't print paper money. You cannot break a contract. So that's why Madison says all these things. And he even calls them a wicked project because he had seen the weaknesses of the state and how a small state, small assembly or small population, the representatives can be really, really forced by their people to do things that are not right, that in the long run it will have negative effects. But he says when the area is small, when the republic is small, just like we've seen in one of some of these 13, some of the 13 states right now, says that could happen to us too. If the republic is small, Somebody might take power that we don't want. And just think of himself and his own group and not think about the rest of the people. <coughs> Excuse me. And we get to the last paragraph. In the extent and proper structure of the Union, therefore we behold a Republican remedy for the diseases most incident to Republican government. So this Republican form of government is the cure, is the remedy for all the diseases that come with the excesses of democracy. When you have a pure democracy, things get go, can go crazy. So he says, this large republic is very beneficial to us because we won't have all those crazy problems that small republicans and sometimes some monarchies do. And according to the degree of pleasure and pride we feel in being republicans ought to be our zeal in cherishing the spirit and supporting the character of the Federalists. And he here himself pats himself on the back in a way, means he's, he's telling himself that I'm, that I'm thinking of your future, you can trust me, you can trust this union, As, and according to the degree of pleasure and pride we feel in being Republicans, ought to be a zeal in cherishing the spirit and supporting the character of Federalists. So, with these reasons, he said, you should trust us, you should trust the work we have presented you, this Constitution. It's for your happiness and prosperity. And, uh, of course, he's gonna, they're going to continue in a whole bunch more papers to explain federalism, to explain the Constitution, and also answer... all those critics that are criticizing them, cr criticizing the Constitution in the newspaper papers of the day. So, this is pretty good stuff. So when you come across these, these 10 videos that I put as an introduction to Federalist number 10, just make sure you go over them yourself, and think about it and then in the next video we'll start we should be able to start talking about them in a little bit more detail thank you